A federal judge has upheld the expulsion of a counseling student who opposes homosexuality. Supreme Court nominee Alina Kagan said that homeschoolers can be required to ask permission before homeschooling their children. Prince Charles thinks he has a sacred duty to save the world. Where will all this lead? We'll discuss these things today on Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Urban Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Well, there's all kinds of news coming through the wires today. Some good and some not so good. I found this one very, very interesting, however. Philistine Temple ruins uncovered in Goliath's hometown. The hometown of Goliath was a place called Gath. And, of course, uh, Goliath is the most famous Philistine ever for his challenging of Israel and his defeat by soon-to-be King David. So it's very interesting. This story, let me just give you a little bit of it. bar el University archaeologist have uncovered the ruins of a Philistine temple in the ancient city of Gath, home of the biblical Goliath, buried in one of the largest tells in Israel. The temple and a number of ritual items dating back to the 10th century. Now, that's when David lived here on earth. Uh, He ruled about 1,000 B.C. uh, Were discovered at Tel Safit by Professor Aaron Mayer of BIU's Martin Department of Land of Israel Studies and Archaeology and his international team. The Tell, which is a hill containing uh, archaeological uh, treasures, the Tell is located about halfway between Ashkelon and Jerusalem near Kiryat Gat, which they've dropped the H, it would have been Kiryat Gath, along the southern coastal plain down near the Gaza Strip. So we're winding the clock back 3,000 years, and they're finding all of these evidences that the Bible is true. I become so amused so many times because for many years, uh, certain people lifted up in their own evaluation of themselves have mocked the validity of the Bible, and yet... Uh, archaeological discovery after archaeological discovery uh, continues to affirm that the Bible is the most accurate book that we have in the world. Now, I want to make sure I don't just run over the top of that statement. The discoveries of archaeology and history continue to prove that the Bible is the most accurate book on earth. That's important to all of us, because if the Bible is accurate historically, that accurate, more accurate than any book in the world, then we certainly have to consider the rest of the Bible, the spiritual side of the Bible and its validity as well. Let me just tell you real quickly how accurate the Bible really is. You know, for many years, scholars mocked the book of Daniel. They said it cannot be true because it talks, it devotes a chapter to this Babylonian king by the name of Belshazzar. But they went on to say, but there's no other history book that mentions Belshazzar, so he must not have been a real figure. Therefore, the book of Daniel cannot be considered a valid, serious book. Well, it went on that way for many years. Until in the middle 1800s, there was an archaeological dig conducted in the city of Babylon, which, of course, was the headquarters of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, who the Bible calls the father of Belshazzar. Well, as they were digging down there, they stumbled onto this one particular cornerstone, 
and they found their inscriptions. And it said something like this, unto Nebuchadnezzar, his son Nabonidus, and his son Belshazzar. Wow, lights go on. So, the Bible is the only historical record to that time of Belshazzar. And yet, the Bible was correct, and all other history books available to mankind, all other, had failed to mention this king by the name of Belshazzar. But when they dug down into the old ancient city of Babylon, there they found absolute proof that the Bible was true. You know, something like this happened uh, just a, a few months ago. They were digging on the south end of the Temple Mount, and there they found these small seals that were used by governmental officials to stamp documents to give it the official uh, seal that was needed for, for governmental documents. And there they found the name of two men who was ruling during the time of Zedekiah. Now, Zedekiah is the king who ruled Israel at the time of Jeremiah. And these two particular men, the Bible records in the book of Jeremiah, went to Zedekiah urging him to put Jeremiah to death because Jeremiah was preaching against the war that Zedekiah was trying to generate. He was telling the people of Israel, do not fight the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar because it's of God. If you resist him, you resist God. When he comes here, you are to go with him peacefully. If you do that, then God will take care of you and bless you even in your exile. But if you resist, you're going to be destroyed. So there were many of the people they went with Nebuchadnezzar down to Babylon. And among those was Daniel, the three Hebrew children, and many other religious God-fearing Jews who believed the preaching of Jeremiah. But then there were those who were not religious. They were not God-fearing. They knew nothing of God. And so here these people were urging the death of Jeremiah because that he was seen as an enemy of the state. Well, Zedekiah never was willing to go quite that far. He did put him in the dungeon for a while, uh, attempting to get him to promise to hold his peace. But these two men, who we have no record ever existed, except for the biblical record until a few months ago. And as they were digging down, they found these little seals. They're called Bulla, B-U-L-L-A. And it had the names of these officials right down in the era at the strata that Zedekiah would have been king. And here their seals are, affirming again the, belief, the, the proof of the Bible. Let me say to all of you out there, before you just take the word of some empty-headed professor or some lifted up, proud, self-important individual, you better do your homework a little bit. Because there is a God... And he has a book called the Bible. The Bible has outsold all other books. And when a person raises up and puts their thumbs in their lapel and tells you that the book is just a collection of stories, fiction, and tries to discount the book that more people have deemed to be true and important than any other book, should you believe this novice who springs up in his own self-importance and tries to denigrate the book that more people have esteemed to be the most important book ever written, should you take that majority opinion uh, before you take the opinion of this person who is exalting himself above God himself? I mean, think about it for a minute. More people have purchased Bibles than any other book by far. And can you believe that 2,000 years after the Bible was written, it still is outselling all other books? It's absolutely stunning. It's amazing. So before you just write that off as so much of the ignorance of man, maybe the people who try to tear it down are the ones who are in ignorance. You know, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I mean, can you look at the complex?